Hello, student. Let's start with our uh, uh, unit number three, which you have uh, already started in the previous week, and some of the contents already we have studied. So let's just uh, have the recap on the whatever the previous content we have seen. So as you know, our uh, unit number three name is the syntax direct trade translation and uh, semantic analysis. And in that already we have seen what is the need of semantic analysis. That is the third phase of compiler. As you have seen from the second phase of compiler, we get the modified parse tree. Uh, sorry, we get the uh, plain parse tree, which is also called as a syntax tree also as output, which is given as an input to the semantic analyzer. And then semantic analyzer does its work. And you know the role of semantic analyzer is nothing but to check whether the particular sentence and the expression are semantically correct or not, means whether it is meaningful or not. And to, to check that, the semantic analyzer takes the help of one of the important techniques that is the syntax directed translation. So, syntax directed translation as a part of the semantic analyzer generates the one more tree that is called as an annotated parse tree. And this annotated parse tree generation indicates the particular sentence or expression is valid or not. And in this whole process, we have studied the particular what is the concept of syntax directed translation, what is attribute, what is annotated parse tree, these all the points we have studied last time. And uh, when uh, the particular third phase of compiler, that is a semantic analyzer, utilizes the syntax directed translation, is nothing but traversing that particular parse tree in order to get the values of different attributes and this whole process is nothing but called as a syntax directed translation and in another way also we have described it it is nothing but the original grammar plus semantic rules that is also called as a syntax directed translation so in the third phase of compiler we modify our original grammar and in that grammar we add some semantic rules and this whole uh, process, then we are referring it as a part of the syntax directly translation. And this part also, you know, we have called it as a syntax directed definition also. Okay, so this original grammar plus semantic rules, this is being also referred as a syntax directed definition also. Here also we have mentioned the SVD, that is syntax directed definition is a context free grammar together with the attribute and the rules so attribute of this is dot well attribute of this is dot well attribute of this is dot well like this and this whole uh, particular uh, production then becomes a particular rule okay and that is the reason we have discussed the syntax directed translation in a single grammar plus semantic rule and in that uh, this particular part is being referred as a cement uh, syntax directed definition which is nothing but the attribute plus rules okay and this point already last time we have studied what is the SGD, what is the SGT, and example also we have studied how to uh, convert the particular parse tree which we are getting from the syntax analyzer into the uh, another kind of parse tree. That another kind of parse tree we are referring as an annotated parse tree, and we are calling it as an annotated parse tree because we are adding some attributes. Now this is the parse tree we are getting from the syntax analyzer and to this parse tree we are adding some attributes some extra information why we are adding this extra information so that the compiler can able to determine whether the particular sentence or the expression is meaningful or not and then we are finding the value of this particular attributes okay and you know to find the value of this uh, attributes we traverse this parse tree okay in the top down or bottom up fashion and this whole process of traversing and getting the values of attributes that is the concept of our syntax directed translation and during this process we have to utilize the grammar okay first from the grammar and we added some extra information 
we have to generate the this particular annotated parse tree and next step is nothing but the getting the value of this attributes by traversing this parse tree okay and this whole process is nothing but our syntax directed translation okay so this already last time we have seen now today uh, in the next part of this we will going to study some more details uh, regarding the syntax directed translation which we are utilizing uh, as a part of the semantic analysis okay so semantic analyzer main role is nothing but to determine whether particular sentence or the expression is meaningful or not whether it is a semantically correct or not so in order to do that we have seen we use the one important technique that is called as a syntax directed translation and in that different concept we have studied like uh, syntax directed definition attributes etc etc and syntax directed translation is nothing but grammar plus semantic rules okay and also when we traverse the particular parse tree to get the values of attributes then that whole process is also referred as a syntax directed translation okay syntax directed definition also we have discussed that is nothing but the attributes plus uh, particular rules okay that i have shown you and uh, attributes can be a different kind of values it can be a uh, integer it can be a float it can be a string okay so this thing already we have discussed now in this lecture we are going to discuss about the attributed grammar and uh, types of attributes okay with example now these are the outline of the content that we are going to discuss okay we are going to discuss what is attributed grammar then types of the attribute then we will discuss the types of the attribute with example and in the time permit we also discuss regarding the difference between the synthesized and the inherited attributes okay now let's first discuss about the uh, attributed grammar okay now attributed grammar can also be considered as a modified grammar means as i have shown you previously our original grammar and in that original grammar we add some extra information okay that we are referring as a modified grammar so that to that original grammar we are adding some attributes okay to that original grammar we are adding some attributes so that is nothing but the consider as attributed grammar the grammar with some added attributes so syntax directed definition to, to syntax directed definition you can also call as attributed grammar let's see so attributed grammar is nothing but special form of cfg as i said and to that context we grammar original grammar we add some additional information that additional information nothing but what we adding some attributes okay we are appending that attributes to the different non terminal symbol which is present in your original grammar and each attribute is uh, uh, has well defined domains of values as i said we have to we have to compute the values of attribute and that can be a integer float character string expression etc okay so why we have to utilize the attributed grammar or uh, as i said the syntax directed definition also we can call it as attributed grammar now why actually need so to the original grammar we have to provide some meaning to the original grammar we have to provide some semantics okay and to provide some meaning to that particular uh, original grammar okay we have to add the attributes that that attributes to that particular grammar and that is the thing i have mentioned here attributed grammar is medium to provide semantics is a medium to provide meaning to the original grammar context free grammar and it can help to specify the syntax and semantics of the programming language so here we are adding the attributes to the grammar and that added attributes to the grammar that grammar is called as attributed grammar and that for what purpose because it helps us to determine whether particular sentence is semantically correct or not whether it is a meaningful or not so here also i have mentioned attributed grammar can pass the values or information among the nodes of the three so attributed grammar is used to pass or provide the values to the different nodes of the tree in the example i will show you at last you can see the syntax directed definition which already in the previous lecture we have seen that is nothing but what attributes plus attributes plus semantic rules that is called as a syntax direct uh, syntax directed definition so sdt without any side effect is also called as a attributed grammar means to the sdt also you can call the attributed grammar okay now now for example now this is the consider as attributed grammar only one production here is being written now this is our original grammar e derives e plus t now 
this is grammar is being modified this grammar is modified with added some attributes here now each of these non terminal is being added is being appended with some attributes now attributes name is what here value dot value okay this value is not the va this uh, dot value is the name of the attribute okay and we have to find out the value of this attributes value okay so here you can see the right part of the context free grammar contain the semantic rules means this part is nothing but referred as what semantic rules okay that specify how the grammar should be interpreted means that specify what should be the meaning of that from that it can be determined meaning of the particular expression from that it can specify the how the grammar should be get interpreted how you can determine the meaning of that particular grammar that can be specified with the help of such kind of semantic rules okay so here you can see the values of non terminal e and t are added together and the result is copied to the non terminal e means in order to get the value of this e dot val you have to add this e dot val plus t dot val and then you will get the value of this e dot val that is the result which is referred as a semantic rule okay so based on now this is nothing but the all the things related to the attributed grammar simply you have to keep in mind the grammar with some added attributes that is called as a attributed grammar the same thing we have discussed regarding the syntax directed definition also okay so here you should not confuse between the uh, syntax directed translation syntax directed definition and the attributed grammar syntax directed translation is nothing but what that whole process means which process uh, adding the semantic rules within a original grammar and then from that Uh, getting the annotated parse tree and then traversing that parse tree and finding the values of all attributes this whole process is referred as what our main technique that is a syntax directed translation and within that these are the sub concepts are there like syntax directed definition which is nothing but what the attributes uh, plus rules so this dot value is attribute and this whole expression become the semantic rule that is the sgd and to the sdt also we can refer with the another name that is the attributed grammar okay so this is all about the sdt sdd and the attributed grammar now next thing we have to discuss that is regarding the types of the attributes we have to discuss okay what types of the attributes now based on now based on uh, the now next thing is nothing but what we have to get the values of the attribute okay now how the values of attributes can be obtained based on that there are the different types of the attributes are there okay like different types of attributes like here you can see the synthesized attributes and the inherited attributes now this categorization of attribute is done on the basis of what on the basis of how the values of the attributes will be get computed how the values of attributes will be get determine now dot val dot val these are all the attributes and we have to find out values of these attributes okay now how you are going to find the values of this attribute based on that there is the two types of the attributes one is the synthesized attribute and another is the inherited attributes okay now let's see what exactly these are now here also i have mentioned based on in what way this attribute can based on in what way this attribute in a given parse tree are calculated and how the values of these attributes are calculated there are the two kinds of attributes okay means based on how the values of these attributes will be get calculated computed based on that there are the two main types of the attributes are there and in that first one is what synthesized attribute okay first one is what synthesize attribute okay now let's see what exactly mean by the synthesize attribute let's see. first just understand the uh, uh, general main concept of this so what which are the attributes we can call the synthesize attributes the attributes which can get the value from the their child these attributes get value from this uh, attribute get value from the attribute value of their child node that attributes are called as what the synthesized attributes okay means which attributes the attribute which get their value from whom from the attribute value of their child then 
that particular attributes are called as a synthesized attributes okay when the attribute get the value from their child that attributes are called as what synthesized attributes let's see here now as derives abc now for if you try to draw the parse tree for this you can draw like this as derives abc okay as derives abc now if this s now if this s is taking the value from a or if this s is taking the value from b or if this s is taking the value from c then this particular attribute which is present at the node s that is called as a synthesized attributes okay same thing i have mentioned if s is taking the value from its child node what if s is the taking the value from its child node what are the child node of s a b c okay if s is taking the value from its child node then it is said to be a synthesized attribute okay if we are s is taking the value from a or b or c then then s is referred as what the synthesized attribute because abc are the child of the s as the value of abc are synthesized to s so as we have written in the previous uh, example of the grammar like e derives e plus t now what is the parent node here e is the parent node and child nodes are what e and t so the parent node a get its value from its child node okay and that is the reason this this e is referred as the synthesized attributes okay so one important thing you should keep in mind here the synthesized attribute never take the value from their parent node or the sibling node okay synthesized attribute never take the value from their parent node or the sibling node the synthesized attribute can take the value only from their child okay it can take the value only from their child okay let's see it with the example okay so same thing that we have discussed here i have written here these are the these are those attributes which derive their values from their child children node that is value of synthesized attribute at a node is computed from the value of attribute at the children node in the parse tree or in the annotated parse tree okay for example we have seen this now let's if you take this example e derives e1 plus t now this e and this e1 are the same you know to just differentiate between this e and this e this is being named as a e1 okay now this is our original grammar production now you add the semantic rule to that that will become e dot val equal to e dot e1 dot val plus t dot val so in this e dot val derives its value from e dot val and the t dot val this e dot val will derive its value from e1 dot val and the t1 dot uh, t dot val then that is the reason it, this e dot val is referred as a synthesized attribute because it is taking their value it is computing their value on the basis of their children okay now let's see the example of computation of synthesized attributes okay example of computation of synthesized attributes okay now one important thing you should keep in mind here the when you are computing the values of attributes the computation only happens in the bottom of manner the traversing what traversing only happens in the bottom of manner in case of synthesized attributes when you are calculating the values of attributes that is the synthesized attributes the traversing only happens in the which fashion or only in the which manner bottom up manner okay and the value obtained at the root node is referred as a final output now let's see these things in the example okay this is the example we have given you can see here we have given the following grammar okay this is the grammar we have given okay this is the grammar we have given okay s derives e then e derives e1 plus t e derives uh, t t derives t1 into f t derives f and f derives digit okay now for this grammar the syntax directed definition of above grammar is written as follow okay as i said the syntax directed definition is nothing but what attribute plus rules now for this s derives e the semantic action or the semantic rule is given print e dot val this production e derives e1 plus t the semantic rule or semantic action is given e dot val equal to e1 dot val plus t dot val similarly e derives t the semantic rule is given e dot val equal to t dot val then for the production t derives t1 into f the semantic rule is t1 dot val equal to the t1 dot uh, t dot val equal to the t1 dot val into the f dot val 
for this t derives f t t dot value equal to f dot van and for last production f derives digit the semantic rule is f dot value equal to the digit dot lex van means this digit value of this digit will be given by the lexical analyzer meaning of this action is what the value of this digit will be given by whom lexical analyzer okay now let's see uh, the same thing here now this is the uh, grammar given for, for this grammar we have this syntax directed definition or you can also call it as a attributed grammar also this is also called as a attributed grammar the grammar with added attributes the grammar with added attributes is called as a attributed grammar okay now from this grammar we have sdd which is also referred as a attributed grammar now we have given the example we have been asked we have been asked here let us assume the input string 4 into 5 plus 6 and we have to evaluate the value of this whole expression okay we have to evaluate the value of this whole expression how we are going to evaluate it by computing the synthesized attributes okay by computing the synthesized attributes now first thing we have to do is what first thing you have to do is create the annotated parse tree okay create the annotated parse tree okay now syntax analyzer will generate the parse tree like this s derived e plus t now syntax analyzer will generate the plain parse tree or syntax tree with the help of this grammar then e derives t into f we can have e derives e derives t sorry e derives t only then t derives t into f then again t derives f and f derives digit like this okay then in 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 this case e e uh, s derives e then sorry uh, this okay let's uh, do it again okay so first uh, syntax analyzer syntax analyzer for this grammar syntax analyzer will generate the plain parse tree this parse tree will be look like this uh, here i have insufficient space but let me show you here it will derive the parse tree like starting from the root node s derives e okay then e derives e plus t okay then e derives t into f then t derives f and f derives digit again here you can see t derives f okay and f derives digit okay from this grammar okay then here you can see the again okay again we have made the mistake okay uh, let's try it once more s derives e okay because of the insufficient space i cannot able to show you here let me show you here uh s derives as you can see s derives e okay then e derives e plus t e derives e plus t then again this e this e derives the t again t derives t into f again t derives f according to the grammar and according to the this expression and f derived digit again this f derived digit okay and then you can see this t derives f and f derives digit okay now this is the output will be generated by second phase of compiler 
okay which second phase of compiler and then it will be given to the semantic analyzer and then semantic analyzer in order to generate the you know to determine whether it is meaningful or not whether this 4 into 5 plus 6 now if you calculate the result result should come 26 now whether 26 is coming or not according to this grammar and according to the added semantic rule that is has to check by the semantic analyzer if the result come 26 then this is semantically correct this expression is semantically correct but if result will not get 26 then it is incorrect now it will be checked with the help of the applying the syntax directed translation on this parse tree so this is given as a input to the semantic analyzer then semantic analyzer do the syntax directed translation on that how we do it first this original grammar with added with some semantic rules okay then it becomes the syntax directed definition or attributed grammar then from this grammar this kind of attributed this kind of annotated parse tree will be get generated now why i am calling this as annotated parse tree because to this parse tree we have added some attributes everywhere you can see dot well dot well dot well okay so everywhere you can see to this plain parse tree which we have you got as a output of the syntax analyzer second phase of compiler to that we add some attributes according to the this new grammar we have got and then we next thing we have to do is what we have to evaluate the value of the attributes okay now we have the expression 4 into 5 plus 6 now as i said the evaluation of attributes in case of the synthesis attribute is happen from bottom up manner so we'll start from the bottom up manner from left side now digit dot lex value now digit dot lex value this value of digit will be provided by the lexical analyzer by reading the given input expression now given input expression is what 4 into 5 plus 6 so value of this digit dot lex value is what 4 okay and then we go in the bottom up manner now we come to here now digit whether digit dot lex value can be reduced to f yes digit can be reduced to f so this is now rule for that is what digit dot lex value reduced to f dot value so that is the reason now for f dot value what is the children node digit dot lex value so f dot value get the value of, get its value from the children digit dot digit dot lex value that's why f dot value become 4 accordingly we go go on traversing for the t dot value we take the value from its children f dot value like this we go on traversing as a part of the syntax direct translation when we come to this node again digit dot lex value will be the second value of this expression 5 which is being mentioned here then this f dot value get the value from its children digit dot lex value that is 5 accordingly we come here now t dot value now can the t dot value now what will be the value of t dot value how it will be computed so here you can see t dot value into f dot value can be reduced to t dot value here you can see uh, this rule we have to apply t into f this rule t into f can be reduced to t yes and what semantic rule i have to perform here T T one dot value into f dot value reduced to T dot value, so that is the reason here multiplication of four and five will happen. Now T dot value here is the parent node and its children node are what this T dot value and this f dot value. That's why we will get twenty here. We move on traversing in the bottom of fashion. That's why this e dot value become the parent node and this T dot value become the child node. That's why e dot value can take the value from T dot value. That's why this is referred as a synthesis attribute. In this way we go on traversing. Now when we come to this point. This digit dot lex value will be the six, according to the given expression, and this value will be then provided to the next node, that is the parent node, that will become six. Then this t dot value becomes six, okay, because t dot value is the parent, f dot value is the child. Accordingly, we come to the e dot value here. Now this e dot value is the parent node. Its children node are e dot value plus t dot value. So this rule will be applied, and this uh, uh, this production will be applied. And this semantic rule will be applied. So e1 dot val plus t dot val can be reduced to e dot val. So as the last time I told you the one trick, whenever there is a reduction, go to the production. Okay, whenever there is a reduction, go to the. When now here is a reduction, e1 dot val plus t dot val can be reduced to e. So there is a reduction, so go to the production and apply the particular semantic rule or the action. Action is what? You can get the value of e dot val with the help of e1 dot val plus t dot val. So If you add 20 plus 6, you get the result. So here we are getting the result of this expression 4 into 5 plus 6 as a 26, and from that you can say this expression is a semantically 
correct and this is being computed with the help of which kind of attributes synthesized attribute why this is called as synthesized attribute because each of these node has obtained their value from their children and that is the reason such kind of attributes which are obtaining their values from their children that are being referred as a synthesized attributes okay so the same thing what we have discussed i have mentioned here you can read it to understand more details for computation of attributes we start from the leftmost bottom node okay and the rule f dot digit is utilized to reduce digit to f like this i have shown you and the value of digit is obtained from the lexical analyzer which become the value of f and from semantic action f dot val equal to digit dot lex val means digit dot lex val can be reduced to f dot val accordingly f dot val will get the value four since t is a parent node means this is a parent node of f so we get the t dot value as a four okay from semantic action t dot val equal to f dot val where the f dot val can be reduced to the t dot val then for t derives t1 into f production the corresponding semantic action t dot val equal to t1 dot val into the f dot val will get the value of this t dot val as a 20 accordingly we have got the value of all the attributes as you can see similarly the combination of e1 dot val plus t dot val becomes the e dot val and e e dot val equal to e1 the e1 e1 dot val plus t dot val so the explanation regarding this is been written okay with the help of this node and this node we get this value 20 okay and then finally the production s dot is applied to reduce e dot val equal to 26 and semantic action associated with that is print so the result e dot will value will get be printed means lastly a last rule is being applied here s derives e its uh, semantic action is what printing the value of its semantic action is what printing the value of e that will be performed here okay s can be reduced to e so printing the value that is a 26 will be done here that is the output 26 we will get okay so in this way you can uh, compute the value of uh, attributes in this manner if you calculate the or compute the value of attributes in this manner means which manner when the you are uh, when the attributes can get the value can get their value from their children then that particular concept is referred as what the synthesized attributes and how in which manner we get this value in the bottom of that okay so this is the kind of synthesized attribute you have to keep in mind the attributes which get their value from their children that attributes are considered as a synthesized attributes okay now we have seen the two types of the attributes okay based on how they calculate their values of the attributes so first type is the synthesized attribute second type here we have the inherited attributes okay now let's see what exactly it is okay you can read here these are the attribute which derive their value or which can get their value from their parent or sibling node that is the value of inherited attributes are computed with the help of the value of their parent or sibling node sibling in the sense neighbor node okay now inherited attributes can compute their values of the attribute only with the help of the parent only with the help of its parent and only with the help of its neighbor node but which neighbor node left neighbor node neighbor node is referred as a sibling node understood so this is opposite to the synthesized attribute where attributes values are obtained from children node but here we are obtaining the attributes value from their parent or the sibling let's see in the example a derives b c d now here node c can obtain its value from its parent node a also and from its sibling node left sibling node left neighbor now what is what is the left neighbor of c b so that is the reason it is being written, written here c dot in now here attribute name is in in previous example we have seen the attribute name was dot val so here attribute name is what dot in so c dot in can obtain their value from a dot in or it can also obtain their value now here the different attribute name is written dot type is dot type is written here so c dot type can obtain their value from their sibling node left sibling that is the b that is being written here like this c dot type equal to the b dot type 
so if the attributes values are computed in this manner then that attributes are reported as what the inherited attributes okay now here computation and traversing of the parse tree or annotated parse tree is happen in the top down manner or that is also referred as in the pre order traversing okay top down manner or in the pre order traverse in case of the synthesized attribute what kind of traversing we have applied bottom up traversing but in case of the inherited attributes you know to compute the value of uh, inherited attribute uh, we have to apply the which kind of traversing bottom up fashion okay let's see that in the example okay now this already we have discussed these are the attribute which derive their value from their parent or sibling node the value of inherited attributes are computed by value of parent or the sibling node now this is the grammar we have given let's see what is the grammar we have given first s derives tl now tl is nothing but what now l stand for uh, here stands uh, for the list here okay what type of list different types of the list okay now t as a type int t as a type can be a float t as a type can be a double list can be a l1 comma id and list as a id id in the sense identifier now for this original grammar the first thing that you have to perform is write the semantic rules or the semantic action so syntax directed definition for this grammar is given here or attributed grammar is given that is for this first production the semantic action is l dot in equal to the t dot type then t dot type equal to int t dot type equal to float t dot type equal to double then for this production l derives l1 comma d uh, l1 comma id this is the semantic action understand this semantic action the semantic action is what l1 dot in equal to the l dot in okay and enter type id dot entry into the id dot entry comma l1 l1 uh, entry enter type id dot entry comma l l dot in now what is the meaning of this particular semantic action meaning of this semantic action is what enter the identifier into the symbol table whatever the identifier will be there make its entry into the symbol table this production l derives id for that semantic action is given what entry dot type or enter dot type id dot entry l dot in means make the entry of identifier into the symbol table okay okay now you have understood what is the inherited attribute is what is inherited attribute the attributes which get its value from their parent or the left siblings now let's see the example now we have given this uh, input string for computing the inherited attributes uh, with the type int now as i said first thing you have to do is what we have to uh, add the attributes in this original grammar to get the attributed grammar or syntax directed definition that we have got here and then next thing the annotated parse tree will be generated so parse tree will be generated like plain parse tree for this uh, input string will be generated like this s derives tl okay s s derives okay t l okay then l derives i want the two identifier a comma c so you have to make three plus of this production l derives l1 and id and again this l1 this l will be give you the id now this is this will be done by the syntax analyzer when the semantic analyzer phase will start it working this these things will be added with the attributes like here you can see to the t dot type is uh, mention to the l dot in is mention okay to the l dot in is mention like this and in this way we'll get the annotated parse okay now here can you can see the first uh, now s derives tl now this t dot type now what will the value of dot type attribute the value of those dot type attributes will be the int as it will be provided by the lexical analyzer a i have written this value of t dot type will be provided by the lexical analyzer because in the expression you have given int a comma c means type is int only so this t dot type will get the value int okay and uh, you can see uh, 
this uh, t dot type uh, can also be derived to the int here. Okay, it has been shown. Now, how we will obtain the value of this l dot int? How this int is written here? Now this, now as I said, now this l dot int is the inherited attribute because this l dot int is obtaining the value from its sibling. Now, what is the sibling of l dot int? What is the neighbor of l? Is the t? Okay, neighbor of l is what? T. Here you can see, and that is the reason. Here I have mentioned the value obtained from the sibling, and that was that is the reason. Now, what is the sibling? T dot type. And uh, so that is the reason. Sibling of the l dot int is the t dot type. So t dot type value is the int. That's why this l dot int also becomes the int. Okay. Then what will be the value of this l dot int? That is also written int. Why it is being written int? Because l dot int is what here. L dot in is the child here, and what is its parent? This L dot in. So this L dot in as a parent is having the value in. That's why this child L dot in will become the value as an int. Now here ID for the ID will write the C and comma. Then this L dot in can again be uh, written as a A, or it can be also written like this ID, and ID is nothing but A. Okay, or and this is also correct. So here I have written value obtained from the parent. This l dot in obtained the value from the parent. This l dot in as a okay. This l dot in as a child obtained the value from the parent l dot in. Understood. So in this way, as you can see here, if the particular attribute uh, node, uh, if the particular node attribute obtained the value from its uh, parent or the sibling, that is called as the inheritor attribute. The same thing I have mentioned here. The value of l node is obtained from the t dot type. Because t dot type is a sibling, which is basically a lexical value obtained as an int, float or double. Only here we have to consider the int because in the expression int is given. Then L node gives the type of identifier a and c. Okay, type of identifier is a and c. The computation of type is done in the top-down manner. Now here you can see we have done the computation in the top-down manner, like this. Okay, that is the reason we have discussed the computation of inherited attribute value is done in the top-down. And then using the function enter dot type or enter dot type type of identifier a and c is inserted into the symbol table. Now what will be the type of a and c? The type of a is int and type of c is a also the int. Now this type checking is also happening here. What is the type of a and what is the type of c? Now after doing the type checking with the help of the given the semantic action, the the particular variable entry is made into the symbol table and its type entry is also made into the symbol table. Okay. And that is being done with the help of the which function enter type function. Here I have mentioned using the enter type function, the type of identifier a and c is inserted into the symbol table at the corresponding id dot entry. Means at the corresponding position. Understood. So here we have seen how the value of any attributes can be calculated and how the type of the attributes can be associated with that particular. Uh, how the type of the variable uh, can be determined with the help of this particular syntax directed. Translation. So here, another thing also we have checked. This expression is given whether it is a semantically correct or not. Now, as you can see, you have got the annotated parse tree here, and that annotated parse tree generated. That means this this particular expression is semantically correct. Okay, this particular expression is semantically correct. Understood. so this is all about the uh, types of the attribute in that two types we have seen the one is the synthesis attribute and second is the inherited attributes okay now in the synthesis attribute nothing but what uh, in the attribute in the particular node and its attribute obtain the value from their children known that is called as a synthesis and if the particular node and their attribute obtain the value from their parent and the sibling node then that is referred as what the inherited attributes okay so here type checking also we have done okay for the given expression whether the uh, particular uh, assigned type is correct or not this is also we have check here because here you can see the type of this particular variable a is a int and type of this also coming as a int in the annotated parse so if the annotated parse is getting generated successfully for this expression it means this expression is semantically correct how you can say the whether expression is semantically correct or not 
when when for the particular expression using given original grammar and using given sdd if the annotated parse can be generated successfully it means this particular expression is semantically correct and this we are determining with the help of this syntax directed translation this whole process of adding the semantic rules and generating the annotated parse and then uh, and then traversing is in the top down or bottom up fashion this all this process is referred as the syntax directed translation understood so this is all about in the next time we will see the another new concept related with the syntax directed translation and the semantic analysis okay thank you all of you.